There are two similar fan project cancellations that are good representations of the problems with IP. The first is AM2R, a fan remake of Nintendo's Metroid 2 Return of Samus for the original Game Boy. The second is Total Drama Reunion, a sequel series to Fresh TV's Total Drama series. Let's start with AM2R. AM2R, or another Metroid 2 remake, was created by Argentinian programmer and Metroid superfan Dr. M64, as he prefers to be called in his username handles. Inspired by Nintendo's 2004 Game Boy Advance remake of the original Metroid game from 1986 on the NES, Dr. M64 saw the need for a similar remake for the second Metroid entry. In terms of series lore, it is a crucial entry because it is the one where all but one of the Metroids go extinct. It marks a significant difference between the entries earlier in the timeline, where Metroids were a rampant threat in the galaxy and even became a serious threat to the universe itself on at least one occasion, versus the entries chronologically after Metroid 2 in which the story shifts gears into becoming more about certain evil groups attempting to use what remains of the powerful Metroids to achieve their own galactic conquest. Yet despite its crucial importance to the timeline, the story could have only been experienced on the long outdated original Game Boy, which became nearly obsolete after the end of the Game Boy Color line, the last console which could even play original Game Boy cartridges. With the legacy of the original Metroid game renewed with its Zero Mission remake, Dr. M64, along with many other Metroid fans, saw this obvious need for an update of Metroid 2 as well, one which Nintendo did not seem to be interested in making at the time. So Dr. M64 took it upon himself to revive this nearly lost entry for modern audiences, with Zero Mission as a guide on how to approach the graphics, gameplay updates, and soundtrack he had his work cut out for him. He spent somewhere between 8 to 10 years working on this game, depending on the source. Unlike Nintendo, which as a corporation has no choice but to hold profit as their highest priority, Dr. M64 was clearly in this for his passion of the Metroid series. Considering the amount of time that it took, smaller staff that he had to work with, and his lack of resources compared to Nintendo, and shortly after he finally completed this very long passion project in 2016, Nintendo stepped in to shut it down. The very next year, 2017, was when Nintendo finally released their own Metroid 2 remake, Metroid Samus Returns. While the game looks very fun and I really wanted to play it, I think that there is something to be said for Dr. M64 and his story. He was the underdog. He and his staff did not have the technological resources, influence, and power that Nintendo holds, and yet by sheer determination, they created a version of Metroid 2 that many consider to be just as good as Nintendo's own, even if Nintendo did have the advantage in resources to complete their project much faster. As I said, Samus Returns does look fun, and I do want to play it, but AM2R looks fun too, and unique enough from Nintendo's version to seem enjoyable as its own experience as well. So the obvious question is, why can't both versions of the game exist? Even better, why can't they both be considered canon to the Metroid timeline, even as slightly different versions of the story, similar to Metal Gear Solid and its Twin Snakes remake? The only answer is that it's because Nintendo owns the rights. Nintendo owns the story, which means that their hold over the IP prevents the possibility of AM2R being a canon entry to the series. No matter how much hard work a fan or group of fans put into adding to the Metroid story, it will never actually count unless Nintendo hires them, showing the power that capitalism and corporations hold over us and our ability to make true contributions to stories. While Dr. M64 and his staff do get a somewhat happy ending in this story, after all they at least got to complete their entire game before Nintendo stepped in to shut it down, and Dr. M64 himself even got hired by another group called Moon Studios for his efforts here, I think that this is a clear case of fans having something great to add to a series, only for the concept of IP, to invalidate their efforts. Now let's talk about Total Drama Reunion. Total Drama Reunion was a fan project created by the YouTuber Blue Productions. The fan desire for this project was not unlike the fan desire for AM2R. After six seasons of the Total Drama series, yes I am separating All Stars and Pakato Island due to them being entirely different storylines, arguably seven seasons if one includes the Redonculus Race spin-off, which had a very similar style, Fresh TV decided to drop the main series entirely, and instead do what is called a spin-off baby series on a project called Total Drama Rama. 
I have actually watched Total Drama Rama to have my own opinion on it and not just follow the mindless anger of fans who don't like change. While it's not a bad series by any means, I did actually enjoy it. There's no getting around the fact that it does in fact drop the original timeline leaving fans wondering what exactly did happen to those original characters, with Fresh TV stating that there apparently wasn't interest in continuing the main series, despite many fans obviously still having passion for it. Blue Productions ended up stepping in to create this new season themselves, to give the original timeline a proper conclusion and answer those questions of what did in fact happen to the original cast. After plenty of build-up and teasers, Blue Productions finally released their first episode, and it was done extremely well. The voice actors were way more hit than this, almost all of them matching the original voices perfectly. This is even with the obviously lower quality mics due to Blue Productions lacking the studio resources for sound quality that Fresh TV has. The character designs were a great match to the originals too, while still tweaking them enough to make them look like adults rather than teenagers, making it completely believable that this is what they would all look like a few years later. And best of all, the writing was spot on too. Characters really felt just like themselves. Some even felt more like themselves than they had in a long time, after some character derailment at the end of Fresh TV's own run of the series. But sadly, despite having an entire season prepared, Fresh TV shut the series down after the release of its first episode. Fans got a taste of this extremely well done continuation, only for IP to once again step in and squash the effort. And even worse than the case with AM2R, this happened before we could actually see the whole story play out. Like Dr. M64, this thankfully isn't the end of Blue Productions work however. They've recently started a series of their own called Mysteries of Kruger Mansion and undoubtedly there will be Total Drama fans who will now tune into that series because of how well they made Total Drama Reunion. But nonetheless, one can only wonder what would have actually happened in Total Drama Reunion after its very promising start. And just like Nintendo, Fresh TV has recently announced that they are now creating two new Total Drama seasons in the original timeline. While I am interested in seeing what they do, I nonetheless have the same questions as I did with AM2R vs Samus Returns. Why can't both versions exist? Why can't there be two branching timelines of the story? One where Reunion's story plays out, and another one where Fresh TV's new stories play out. I am sure that both would have their fans, and Total Drama fans could enjoy each of the two unique takes on where the story goes. But due to IP and Fresh TV's ownership, Fans are once again boxed out of getting to contribute to the story unless they are hired by Fresh TV themselves, demonstrating once again the power that capitalism and corporations have over the storytelling media and the power that they have to exclude passionate fans from these stories. Now let's contemplate the pros and cons of what a world without IP would look like. Most obviously, yes, there would be countless people creating countless versions of the same stories, likely with many of these people pushing for their contribution or version of the story to become the definitive one. Without being under an IP banner, it would definitely become a mess trying to even look for any one definitive version of any popular story. The closest we may have seen to this, even within the realm of IP, would likely be along the lines of the original Star Wars Expanded Universe, something that became infamously chaotic to follow. Disney buying Star Wars and kicking out the majority of those stories under their control of the IP arguably did simplify the story. And yes, I have really enjoyed some of Disney's contributions to Star Wars, such as their final season of The Clone Wars, Rebels, Rogue One, and The Mandalorian. But what about the stories that we've lost? Knights of the Old Republic, for example, were incredible games, even if the second one was rushed, and Disney kicking them out of the new Star Wars canon because neither they nor George Lucas made it is quite sad. So is the loss of many of the more interesting expanded universe novels, which now have to come back through Star Wars fans who work for Disney and can officially re-establish them under their IP, outside of the control of average fans who don't work for Disney. Once again, why can't we have both? Why can't we have both Knights of the Old Republic and The Mandalorian in our Star Wars canon? Why can't we agree to just choose to ignore, on our own, some of the worst entries like the Star Wars Christmas special? Getting to decide for ourselves how we best like the story, creating our own personal canons. Why do corporations have to have the official versions under the control of IP? 
I see amazing multiversal potential without IP. Yes, it may be chaotic. Yes, there will definitely be disagreements over who has better choices in their own personal canons. And yes, I definitely know how infamous the world of fanfic is. There would certainly be lots of unenjoyable interpretations among the bunch. Some may be even so bad that they're legendary. But finding our own paths to navigate through, to find the best versions of the classic tales that we like, I think it would be beautiful. We would get to play AM2R and enjoy it alongside Samus Returns, deciding if Nintendo or the fans did it better. We would get to watch both Total Drama Reunion in its entirety and Fresh TV's new Total Drama seasons, deciding which take on the cast's future we personally thought was better. We would get to keep the discarded Star Wars Expanded Universe materials that we liked, alongside the new stories from Disney that we also liked. We would get to build our own personal mythologies from all of these stories, and maybe even contribute to them ourselves without having to join a company or impress a specific publisher to have our work be acknowledged. With storytelling resources shared beyond the companies who hold them, and without IP limits holding us back, the possibilities would truly become endless. We would all have the ability to add to the stories we love in a meaningful capacity without having to join a specific corporation. I think a future without IP could be amazing, so long as we don't forget who created those universes in the first place.